Good afternoon, everybody. Joining us. Good afternoon to you all. I can see you bit by bit are morphing towards us. Excellent. Let me first of all introduce myself. It'll probably be a good start. My name is Miles Morgan. I'm the managing director of both Miles Morgan Travel and Cruises from Liverpool. So um, welcome to everybody this afternoon. Um, if I could just start with, with, first of all, a couple of housekeeping notes. If everybody could mute their microphones while Kerry's doing her presentation, if you don't know how to do that, you just yeah. tap your screen you and you will find there's a microphone and if you just tap that one, you'll find there'll be a line that goes through it. Neil's managed to do it. Well done, Neil. I can see that. Excellent. Just um, tap your screen and then you can mute your microphone and that will make it much, much easier for Kerry when she's doing her presentation. Thank you for that. Second thing, a really important thing is obviously Kerry's going to present to you all about the fantastic offering from Fred Olson. If at any point there is anything that sparks a question in you that Kerry doesn't answer, again, if you tap your screen, there is a chat facility. And please type away into that any question you would like to ask Kerry that she hasn't picked up or anything else that you think of, because this session very much for us is a two way thing. It isn't just about Kerry presenting to you. It's about you also getting out of it whatever you need so please ask okay. anything away in that chat facility and then what i'll do at the end of the session is mm -hmm. i'll ask kerry all those tricky questions which hopefully you can trip her up on at the end of her presentation so um please ask away because that's very important to us to get out of the presentation what you want um it's an exciting time really for, for a presentation on fred olson fred olson are a, a long established company one i've been selling probably over 30 years but the exciting thing for the first time in a long time is they've got some very, very exciting new ships that Kerry will talk about. And so if ever there is a time to be talking about Fred's, it's now. Um, and also, obviously, the reason so many of you have joined today is also the departures from, from Liverpool, which is also great, great news. So I'll pass across to Kerry. She will no doubt inspire you, but please, please ask. Oh, I can already see a question in the chat. Thank you very much to Sue. Please keep them coming because we'll ask Kerry all those questions right at the end. But in the meantime, Kerry, over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Miles. So welcome, everybody. Um, as Miles has said, my name is Kerry and I'm here to talk to you all about Fred Olsen Cruise Lines. So I'm just going to share my screen with you and I hope that you'll all be able to see this presentation. So I'm going to talk to you about 2022 and 2023 itineraries. As Miles has already said, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask me at the end, add them into the chat box. Um, I used to actually work on board the ship. So if you've cruised with Fred Olsen before, you may certainly recognise my face. Um, so I've been to a lot of the destinations and obviously working on board the ship. So I hope to be able to answer any questions that you may have. So let's move on and have a look at what I'm going to cover for you today. So, of course, we're going to talk about our new ships, Boletta and Borealis. We're going to have a sneak peek at how we're getting on with them, getting them ready for you so that when we're ready to set sail again, they are certainly got their Fred Olsen stamps on them. Reasons to cruise with Fred Olsen. So maybe you've cruised with us before. Uh, maybe you've never cruised before. Maybe you've cruised with other cruise lines and you'll be looking to come over to Fred Olsen for your first time. I'll be showing you and highlighting you the reasons and the best reasons why Fred Olsen is a great cruise line. New cruises, so closer to home with more regional departures, handcrafted highlights and a very special world cruise. So throughout this itinerary, obviously, we're going to be concentrating on the Liverpool departures. But first off, let's introduce our new family members. So we have Valletta and Borealis. Now, we purchased these new ships at the end of last summer. A fantastic addition to our fleet of ships. The passenger capacity is 1,338 on board Valletta. Now, anything under 1,500 guests is considered to be a small cruise ship. So, yes, we have bought two new ships. Yes, they are slightly larger than what we had previously, but they are still very much a small ship, still very much a Fred Olsen ship. The facilities that you will find on board, the restaurants, bars, lounges, swimming pools, jacuzzis, fitness centres and the salon, etc. Very similar to what you would have found on our previous vessels. One thing to note, which is a very, very positive thing, is that these ships are actually able to cruise through the water a lot quicker and faster than some of our other ships were able to do so. This means, particularly from Liverpool, 
we can take you to places and back again in a less uh, amount of time. So you can get further quicker. Balletta is traditionally going to be sailing in and out of Dover, Tilbury and Southampton, whereas Borealis is going to be serving the port of Liverpool. And we've got 27 different departures from Liverpool for 2020 and 2022 with our new itineraries that actually went on sale yesterday for our ocean members. So that's all our regular guests that, and passengers that have cruised with us previously. And if you've never cruised with Fred Olsen before, you're just going to have to wait until Monday. So it's not too far away to be able to book your next voyage. So the cruises we put on sale yesterday are for 2022 and the first quarter for 2023 departures. So let's have a look a little bit more in detail about Borealis. So this is actually an artist impression of the ship. We haven't yet been able to take her over to Norway, but we cannot wait until we can get her across. And of course, to other worldwide destinations as well. Passenger capacity is 1,357 guests and the maximum speed is 25 knots. So when you compare that to both Braemar and Balmoral, which do about 16 knots, uh, you can see how much faster they are. So they can get to the Mediterranean and they can do shorter break cruises going further. So, of course, they will be joining the rest of our fleet. So we have the Balmoral. Um, so she carries 1,325 guests. So very similar passenger capacity to our new ships, but the new ships are even bigger. So there's more space per guest on board the bigger ships. Balmoral is going to be cruising in and out of Newcastle, Portsmouth and Southampton for 2022 and 2023. And then moving on to the baby of the fleet, she's the Braemar. She's the smallest. She carries 924 passengers and she traditionally will cruise in and around uh, the summer months out of Rosyth in Scotland and also over in the Caribbean as a fly cruise and then back round to the Mediterranean as a fly cruise as well. Now, with the fly cruises, we also operate um, charter flights from both Gatwick and also Manchester. So let's look in a little bit more detail about exactly what we've been doing to our ships, especially the new ones. So um, you may be aware that our ships are in a semi-dry dock state currently up in Scotland. So we're very much getting our Fred Olsen stamp on our new ships, making them uh, ready for when you're coming on board. So we've been painting, we've got the funnels done, we've got the flags on there. Now, although I'm not able to show you exact images of uh, inside the ships, and the reason for that is because they're not ready. Um, throughout, throughout the period of um, COVID and lockdowns and things, we didn't realise in the beginning how long the ships were going to be up in Scotland. Uh, but during this time, we've actually had another cash injection of money from the Fred Olsen family. So we're able to do actually a lot more improvements on the ship than we had originally planned. So we're upgrading things like the carpets, lights, uh, soft furnishings. Now, Fred Olsen Jr. is very much involved in every intricate detail of our cruises and, of course, including the ships. So that comes down to designing the carpets um, and all sorts of the colour schemes. He's very much involved in every single aspect. So this will give you an idea of some of the colour schemes that we are working towards. As soon as we have internal images available to share, of course, we will do that for you. We do have lots of things to be excited about, of course, on our ships. Now, these images I'm showing you here are the ships of when we first purchased them. So just to give you an idea on space, there's certainly a lot more space per guest on the new yeah, ship. We also have a retractable roof. So this covers the swimming pool should the weather be slightly unfavourable. We also will have lots of original artwork and premium decor throughout the ships. So they're going to feel much more of a premium level when you're coming on board our ships. We've also got more restaurants, bars and lounges, as well as dedicated meeting spaces for our groups. We have a demonstration theatre where we can showcase food and drink from various destinations that we are visiting around the world. So just imagine if you were um, hopping down to France, if when we're going ashore, we can get some great French wines, French breads, French cheeses, and we can do some great demonstrations in the culinary 
uh, demonstration theater. We've got more of our cabins on board with suites and also balconies. And generally speaking, the size of the cabins are much larger than you would have found on our previous vessels. Particularly over the last week, I know that we've been working hard on removing some of the bathrooms and upgrading them with shower cubicles instead of bathtubs. So we are doing lots and lots of changes. And once we're able to showcase you what the cabins exactly will look like, uh, then we will be doing that shortly. We also have two tiered main uh, restaurants on board the new ships, which gives us the opportunity to offer you, our guests, both fixed and flexible dining options. So, of course, we'll still have first sitting at 6.30, second sitting at 8.30, but we'll also be able to offer a more flexible dining approach to those of you that wish. We have a classic two-tiered theatre, so this goes over two decks, and we have a larger spa area on both the new ships, offering hydrotherapy pools, thermal spas and more treatment rooms. So why cruise with Fred Olsen? Perhaps you've cruised with us many times before, perhaps you've never set foot on a Fred Olsen ship. The number one reason is that we have smaller ships. So there's plenty of benefits that come with small ships. First of all, smaller ships, we can take you to places the big ships simply can't get to. We can hunt out the little nooks and crannies all around the world. And when we're going into certain destinations, being a smaller ship means that we can also dock a lot closer to the destination. And that's very prominent in the likes of St. Petersburg in Russia. We can cruise under bridges and we can get closer. This is an image here of Balmoral cruising underneath one of the bridges along the Kiel Canal. So when you do uh, cruising on a smaller ship, you can get closer and you're going to get a lot more scenic cruising in. We also cruise rivers. We can go through locks and canals. On a smaller ship, you're obviously on board with less guests. You're going to be on board with hundreds, not thousands and thousands of passengers. So that means to us, Fred Olsen, you are known as an individual guest. Sometimes you're known as your first name or if you prefer your surname. You are not just a cabin number. You become part of the Fred Olsen family. We also get to know other guests on board. Being a smaller ship, you're going to bump into other people on board. It's definitely a friendly, more personal service on a smaller ship. And not forgetting when we're going ashore, you're going to be going ashore with hundreds of people, not thousands and thousands. And that's really important, particularly when you're visiting more smaller ports of call, such as places in Norway or the Caribbean islands and the beaches. You don't want to be going ashore with thousands and thousands and thousands of people from the same ship. We only, you'll only be going ashore with hundreds. So our UK departure ports, so we've reintroduced a couple for 2022, 2023, these being London Tilbury, Portsmouth and also Belfast. But today we're going to be concentrating on the cruises from Liverpool. So the destinations that we visit, we obviously do visit worldwide destinations, but we will also be including a lot more cruises closer to home. So whether you've cruised hundreds of times before and you simply just want to dip your toe back into cruising, we of course will continue with our worldwide destinations as well. And we can't wait to get back in the water. We have lots of experience. We've been around for over 170 years. So we've experienced our fair share of storms, fair share of world wars even, and a couple of pandemics along the way. But we would believe that we've come through these stronger than ever before. We are now in the fifth generation of the Fred Olsen family, and we've won a lot of awards for that. The most important award that we feel is our Cruise Critic Award, which we've won for the best cruise line itineraries since 2015 every year. And when I come on to share with you our itineraries later, I hope you see exactly why we've won that award. For 2020, unfortunately, we weren't able to sail very many places and for very long in 2020. Rest assured, though, we still won many awards. These were being particularly awarded for our customer service. So keeping our passengers up to date with what was happening on board, what's been happening with cancellations, and of course, keeping you inspired of wanting to come back and cruise with Fred Olsen in the future. So it's great to see that we've won so many awards in 2020. So let's start and look in at our journey planner. 
So what are you, our guests, looking for when you're choosing a cruise? Some of you simply want pure relaxation. Some of you want a journey to the ends of the earth. Some of you would like a bit of culture and exploration. Some of you want a mixture of all three of those on your cruising itinerary. So we take all this into consideration when we are planning and we've done extensive research of what our guests like and don't like. So everything we do is tailored to you. Every little intricate detail on our ships, as well, of course, as our itinerary planning. So when it does come to our itinerary planning, we take everything into consideration. We start from a blank canvas every single year when we plan, and we normally plan two to three years ahead. The first thing that we listen to is our guest feedback from previous voyages. What we don't do is simply copy and paste what we've done from previous years. We start from a blank canvas. Your guest feedback is extremely important to us. So we may have guest feedback to say, we loved the port. We just wish we had a little bit more time there. Great, we take that into consideration and possibly offer the option of an overnight stay. We listen to your onshore experiences as well as what's happening on board the ship. So if you're out on tours, we love to hear all about them. We make sure that there's a mixture of sea days and port days, and of course, going to some very exciting and exclusive destinations. We look at calendar and seasonal events, what's happening around the world. We need to make sure that our ships are in the best possible place at the best possible time so that you're gonna get the best out of your cruise. And we look at destinations around the world of where we can get small ship benefits. Where can we take you that big ships aren't, simply can't get to? So when we take all that into consideration, I hope you can see how we've won our awards for our award-winning itineraries. So these two people here on the screen are Claire Ward and Martin Lister, and they're the head of our itinerary planners. However, nothing gets approved. It must be signed off by Fred Olson Jr. himself. So he's very much involved in the planning, the brochure and every little detail on board our ships. So let's look at some of the highlights for 22-2023 from Liverpool. Now, first of all, we've got a launch offer. So the new launch offer went on sale yesterday. So if you are booking a new cruise, on most departures, you're going to have the option of an onboard spending credit or a complimentary drinks package. So this is mainly on cruises from five nights to 24 nights. If you're choosing a cruise that's more than 24 nights, then there may still be an offer of an onboard spending credit. So the choice is yours. So let's look at a glance of what we have to offer you. So we've got 126 cruises ranging from three nights to 101 nights throughout the world. We have 220, 272 different ports of call. We have 119 areas of scenic cruising and we have 82 countries with 15 maiden ports of call. Now we are the cruise line in the UK and it wouldn't surprise me if we're also the same cruise line in the whole of the world that has the highest number of repeat passengers. Nearly 70% of our passengers coming on board have been cruising with us previously. And I think that speaks volumes in itself. So we've got to make sure that we you will want to come back to us time and time again. We've always got to seek out new ports of call, maiden ports of call of where we can take you. So first of all, let's look at some of the highlights of a cruising around the UK. So from Liverpool or indeed Belfast, uh, you can cruise up and around remote isles and the locks of Scotland. And again, being smaller ships, we can take you to places and get you closer, more scenic cruising to places like uh, Small Isles and Fingal's Cave. So just to give you an idea, this one is an eight night cruise leaving from Liverpool on the 9th of June next year. Prices start at 1299 per person. You'd have an option of free drinks package or an onboard spending credit. From Liverpool, we also have cruises that are circumnavigating in a clockwise direction around Ireland. And again, destinations that we're able to visit and do more scenic cruising with the smaller ships include Loch Swilly, which is actually a fjord over in Ireland. Other short breaks? Now this one might quite surprise you. It's a five night cruise from Liverpool 
over to Zeebrugge for Bruges and down to Honfleur. Now with Borealis, as I mentioned at the beginning, she can sail a lot quicker. So you're able to go from Liverpool around on a short five night cruise and back again. Slightly further afield from Liverpool, of course, we offer the Norwegian fjords. So Norway is um, a fantastic itinerary. If you've not yet been, I certainly do recommend going. And we believe that we're the best cruise line to take you to Norway. We are a Norwegian family run business. We know the water's like the back of our hands. And our ships are able to still visit some of the destinations that other cruise ships aren't unable to visit anymore. And that includes Flum. And the reason being because you have to have um, environmental impacts and environmentally friendly ships to be able to visit some of the ports of call in Norway, particularly Flom. Being a smaller ship, we're able to cruise in and out of more intricate ports of call and some very narrow fjords. We visit Norway throughout the year. We visit in the springtime and the summer and of course the winter. If you're going in spring, you're gonna be able to see the waterfalls at their fullest. And if you go in the winter time, hopefully you'll get a glimpse of the Northern Lights. From Liverpool or indeed Belfast, you can also cruise up the scenic isles of the Faroe Islands. We also have a combined cruise heading up to Iceland and also the Azores. So a very volcanic cruise. You'll be circumnavigating Iceland and then heading down to three islands in the Azores. Orca's actually going to be on board this particular cruise. So they'll be able to um, point you in the right direction to hopefully see lots of whales. And that's the real theme on this cruise, which is why it's heading to the Azores and Iceland, uh, being that these are the routes that the whales will take. So hopefully you should see lots of different species of whales with orca on board. Civilizations of Cape Verde and Morocco. So if you'd like to head down to some sunshine, you've got Madeira and then further down into three islands in the Cape Verde. You've got Agadir and Morocco, Casablanca and Tangier on your way back home. So a beautiful cruise heading down for some winter sunshine in February of 2023. Right place, right time. So these are the itineraries that we've planned to make sure that our ships are in the, the best possible place at the best possible time. So you're gonna get the maximum enjoyment out of your cruise. So like I mentioned, we do Norway in the winter. And of course, going in the winter, you'll be hopefully have a glimpse of the Northern Lights. Now, Alta and Tromso, high up in the Arctic Circle, some of the best places to see the Northern Lights. And that's why we've got overnight stays in both of those ports of call. If you also have the time, uh, sorry, if you will also have the time to explore and if you wish, stay overnight in the Ice Hotel up in Alta, which I recommend, it's amazing. The Floriad Expo is happening in Amsterdam. It's a horticultural show that happens every 10 years. So we needed to make sure that we have some ships available to take our passengers to Amsterdam. And again, we'll be overnighting. The horticultural show um, is happening in the spring of 2022. So you'll be hopefully the flowers and everything will be in full bloom. Other ports of call on this itinerary include Zeebrugge, Bruges, and of course, Honfleur. Heading west from Liverpool, you can get over to Canada and back again in a 15 night cruise and still be able to see all of the east coastal seaboard. We also, we, we're running about three or four different cruises over to Canada throughout the year. Some of them a little bit later than this. So you'll be able to go and experience the fall and the colours of the orange fall season. Again, another departure heading down to the sunshine. And this one's actually a Christmas cruise on board to the Canary Islands. And of course, staying um, in Madeira as well. So that one set sail on the 22nd of December. 
We do have other Christmas cruises, of course. We have four ships. So we have another Christmas cruise out in the Caribbean. We have one going up to Norway for a winter Norway cruise and a white Christmas leaving from Tilbury, including the Northern Lights. We also have a very similar departure to this one leaving from the southern port of Portsmouth for Christmas. Talking of the Caribbean and <coughs> excuse me, talking of the Caribbean and fly cruises, then as I mentioned, we have charter flights available from Manchester and Gatwick airports. And you can fly out. We've got two home ports in the Caribbean, the first being Barbados, the second being Havana in Cuba. So most likely, if you're doing a 14 night cruise, you'll fly into one of those airports and fly home from the other. What we don't do in the Caribbean are bus routes. We don't repeat the same itinerary over and over again. And particularly important for those guests that are staying with us on board for back-to-back -back cruising in the Caribbean. So if you're visiting the islands and you're staying on to do another cruise, you won't be visiting the same destinations. We often have a lot of guests in, in the Caribbean doing uh, four weeks, six weeks, even eight weeks with us at a time. We also have fly cruising in the Mediterranean. So this is something we haven't done for a while. So we're heading back into the Med for fly cruises for 2023. So this particular one's gonna be flying in and out of Valletta in Malta. And again, we will be able to offer Manchester flights available for this one. This one's doing the Greek islands. And of course, the highlight on this one's going to be the Corinth Canal Cruise. Now, we are doing the Corinth Canal Cruise as an ex-UK departure. And you'll be looking at about 25 to 30 nights to cruise from uh, a southern UK departure port such as Southampton and back again. These cruises are obviously a lot shorter, being that you're flying straight out to Malta. They're 10 nights in duration. But you do need to be extremely quick because we have very limited availability on all our current canal cruises. We've got three of them on sale. This is another fly cruise. So as I mentioned on this one, you could fly into Havana and come back from Barbados. Now, this is slightly different to the Caribbean. Many islands in the Caribbean, gorgeous beaches that you can go and enjoy. Whereas the islands and destinations we're visiting on this particular cruise is more around the wildlife and culture of Central and South America. I'm coming on to an extraordinary adventure. So in 2023 will be 150 years after the first publication of Around the World in 80 Days with Phileas Fogg. So we decided that we'd set out on this very similar adventure that Phileas Fogg took with Borealis for a complete trip of a lifetime. So it's around the world in 80 days. It's going to be on Borealis. It's going to be 79 nights or 80 days. Now, the cruise ship will set sail from Southampton. However, Two days beforehand, if you would like to join the voyage in Liverpool, you can jump on board on the 21st of February 2023 to set off on your round the world cruise in what will then be an 81 night cruise. Don't worry, at the end of your voyage, we will simply provide you a free transportation back to Liverpool. So the journey will set off south, it will head down towards Lisbon and it will turn east into the Mediterranean, cruising along a very similar route that Phileas Fogg took on his Around the World in 80 Days. However, our ships are able to go much faster, so we can add a lot more ports of call into that journey. The cruise has been per perfectly timed, so you'll be leaving uh, late February 2023, and when you arrive in Egypt and go through the Suez Canal, it's going to be lots of celebrations in and around Egypt, because it will be exactly 100 years after Howard Carter first opened Tutankhamun's tomb. You'll then have a couple of ports of call in India. So great opportunity for you to explore overland trips. So you'll have an opportunity to visit the Taj Mahal and of course the Golden Triangle. Then on to Singapore. Nha Trang in Vietnam, which was one of my personal favourite destinations. Hong Kong, and then arriving up further north into Japan. 
you have four ports of call in Japan. And again, it's perfectly timed. So when you arrive, you'll be there for the full bloom of cherry blossom. Now, Phileas Fogg didn't have time on his adventure to visit Hawaii, but as we're crossing the Pacific Island, there was certainly time to visit three islands before arriving in San Francisco. Plenty of opportunity for you to cycle over the Golden Gate Bridge and go and visit Alcatraz before arriving down into San Diego, Acapulco. So on your way out, you'll be cruising through the Suez Canal. On the way home, you'll be cruising through the Panama Canal. And these will be transited during daylight hours. So you'll get to see all the workings of the canal. And certainly in my experience, everybody will be out on the, out, the outside decks enjoying their time cruising through the, the Panama and the Suez Canal. You'll have a pot, pot, couple of ports of call in South America, the Caribbean, the Azores, before returning back to Southampton. That cruise starts at 9,999 per person. And there's up to £500 onboard spending credit available for that direct cruise. So like I mentioned, some of the highlights on this one's going to be Egypt during the Tutankhamun anniversary of the opening of the tomb. Cherry Blossom in Japan. And of course, the Hawaiian Islands. And a great city visiting San Francisco, your first port of call in the United States. Now, there is a digital brochure, so our new brochure um, is available to you. There is a digital version if you would prefer to have a little look at this online. Um, if you don't yet have a cruise brochure from uh, Cruises from Liverpool, just let us know at the end um, or let uh, Miles know in the team and we can certainly send you some brochures out to you. If any of you have cruised with Fred Olsen before and sadly had to have some of your cruises cancelled over the last 12 months or so and you're sitting on some vouchers, not a problem. Just let us know when you're ready to make your next booking. Just to clarify, if you already had an existing cruise and you're sat on a voucher, it's going to be worth 10% of your new cruise value if you're booking a cruise that is a lower value than your original cruise. If you're booking a, crew, a new cruise that's a higher value, then it will be 10% of your existing cruise. There is absolutely no rush to make your decision. Your cruise vouchers are, well, are valid for 12 months, but if we are holding any payment for you, we will hold that for 24 months. If at any time you decide that you want your refund, that's not a problem, just let us know. Or if we do hold your money for the total of 24 months, and you haven't transferred it to a new cruise, we will give you back an additional 5% just to say thank you for supporting us during this particularly difficult time. If you do have any further questions on existing vouchers, just let uh, your agents know at uh, Cruises from Liverpool and they'll be more than happy to help you. The itineraries are going on general sale on Monday. So if you have vouchers and you know the cruise that you want and the cabins, I would recommend trying to get those cruise vouchers uh, used before Monday if you can. If not, don't worry, they're going to still certainly be available. And if anybody is thinking of booking a new cruise and parting with a deposit, don't worry because we've got our updated plane sailing guarantee. So this means if you part with a deposit and book your next cruise with us, and for any reason that you then change your mind, whether it's the dates that you're not able to go on or you want to go on a different destination, not a problem. You can transfer that deposit to an alternative cruise as long as you let us know before the final payment is due. And that will be due um, 90 days before departure, which is three months on a standard cruise. Or if you're booking a longer voyage that's more than 24 nights, then there will be an interim payment due. So you need to let us know before that's due, which is 180 days before departure which is six months. So there is the flexible option of transferring your deposit from one cruise to another. So that leaves me to come on to say thank you very much for listening to me. If anybody does have any specific questions, feel free to um, pop them in the chat and I will do my very best to answer them. And back over to Miles. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you. Um, thank you. I think obviously we've got... Um, a, a mixed audience here, I would suggest, normally in terms of people that are 
cruises previously, Fred Olsen cruises previously. And I think, you know, if you like, as the unbiased chap here in terms of I, I'm not representing Fred Olsen, um, I, I'm very keen on, on these presentations actually putting off people as well as inspiring people to travel because the thing about a cruise ship, cruise ships are not all the same. They're very, very different experiences and it's important that the right customer goes on the right ship. And in terms of Fred Olsen, what they do and what they offer is very different, as Kerry said, from other people. And so what you'll find is if you want a choice of nine different restaurants, 24-7 entertainment, um, ice skating rinks and all that sort of stuff, that is not a Fred Olsen experience. If you want a smaller ship that can get into more intimate ports of call, if you want amazing food and service, that's Fred Olsen. You know, it's, it's a very different type of thing. And, and and I'd be delighted if me saying that puts you off going on, Fred, because actually that's good news for Kerry as well, because it's about getting people on the, on the right ship. That's the crucial thing. But, you know, small ports, small ports of port is a big win for a lot of people because, you know, particularly when you go on some cruises, the same ports of port come up all the time. And the advantage of Fred is they can go into a lot of these smaller ports, which makes a, makes a really, really big difference. And the other thing that's fair to say is that the, the new Fred with the new ships also makes a big difference because in, in days gone by when I used to do face-to-face -face presentations with Kerry, God, I remember those days, they were wonderful. Uh, do them now when it's on Zoom. Uh, I always used to say to customers, Fred Olsen do not have the hardware in the world. In fact, all their hardware was quite old. And therefore, sorry, has somebody got their microphone turned on because there seems to be a lot of feedback? Yes, stop it. Um, if anybody's got their mic on, can they just press and, and turn their mic off because it's... um. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. What a that's difference great. that is. Wonderful. The yeah. the so on. In terms of the the ships, they, they didn't have the newest hardware. So to inspire people to travel with Fred Olsen, the only way they succeeded, and spectacularly so, was to offer brilliant food and brilliant service. And the things Gary talked about, you know, you go to the bar, you order a gin and tonic. The next night when you go up to the bar, the gin and tonic's already there because they recognise you because it's a smaller ship and bang, the gin and tonics there. And that's a lovely feeling that, that you get. And you just don't, don't get that on the larger vessels. And so now the combination of Fred's getting these new ships, which are amazingly different from the old ones and the service and, and the food and everything they offer, it is brilliant. And so I'm really looking forward to, to the restart of cruise and seeing um, all of those things put into action, which kind of leads me on quite nicely because the, the, the first question that we got in the chat, which is, um, which is a really, really key one, really. And probably the question on everybody's lips is, you know, what about cruising? When will people be cruising? What will be happening with cruising? Will my cruise be going? Kerry, do you want to give us your, your thoughts on that one? Absolutely. So um, the government just this week have given us the green light to start cruising again, which is absolutely fantastic news. So we're very much in the process of getting our ships ready, getting our crew back into um, joining our ships so uh, watch this space at the moment we are due to start cruising in July that was our plans before the government announcement so we will be able to update you on destinations that we're able to visit in the beginning I think it's very much going to be cruising a lot closer to home so around the UK and so forth before we're able to go to more worldwide destinations but fingers crossed it's not that long away there is light at the end of the tunnel now yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that an awful lot of work has gone in from the cruise industry over the last 12 months to put in place protocols that have been agreed by, by the government in both England, Scotland and Wales that will allow people to travel and travel safely on cruise ships. So it's almost an even better time to cruise because, you know, the health and safety and the COVID secure is probably the best it's ever been. So that, that's really, really good news. Let me see if I can catch you out with another one then, Kerry. Um, Will Floriad Cruise dock in Amsterdam or oh my goodness, I murdered? That's the name of the port. Yeah, yes. it's the name of the port. Um, we will be able to dock in the heart of the city. Yeah. yeah and it, again, it, if anything can then feed into my comment about the size of the Fred ships, it's that one. They, they get in where other people can't. Um, Definitely. So interested in booking the cruise this autumn, which options are available? Um, 
Well, on that one, at the moment, as Kerry said, all options are available, and with the restart being given the green light, 17th of May. Sorry, there's still a lot of background noise, isn't there? Can you hear it, Kerry? I can't hear no. it, no. I, I got feedback on my end. Hopefully everybody can hear me nice and loud and clear, which is good. Yeah, so, you know, with the restart from the UK on the 17th of May, with UK-based cruising going around the UK, that gives me high hopes that once we reach midsummer, we should see a redemption of the majority, hopefully, of Mediterranean cruising. And then, as Kerry said, worldwide building from there. So if you're looking to book from sort of October onwards, then, yeah, I, I would look at the whole whole range of cruises that are in the market. If you're looking to book something for, for kind of midsummer, then I would be looking UK based or once we get to July and August, maybe look at European based. Um, so that's how I see things sort of playing out over the course of, of this year. But at least it's positive, which is really good news. Um, are there any more questions or have we all exhausted Kerry? No, I've got some here that I can read. Um, will oh, our cruises still be going in August to the fjords? Um, again, very good question. We just need to wait and see where we are able to cruise to. But they're certainly um, on sale. Uh, we, For example, we've got a Liverpool departure to the fjords this August, um, taking place on the 6th of August. So at the moment, that's still very much on sale. So fingers crossed that everything goes well, it goes smoothly, and we are able to go to more destinations as soon as possible. Yeah. Great. So if anybody's interested in a cruise from this presentation or wants to know more or has another question they think of subsequently for Kerry, then please get in touch with us at Cruises from Liverpool. You know, you can you can contact us by email. Our phone is on the website 051 438 2325. So do phone us if you want anything whatsoever into the check in availability or just simple questions or, or reassurance on anything. That's what we're here for. And I think Kerry would probably endorse that the the staff that will answer the phone there are Fred's experts. They're not as expert as Kerry because they haven't sailed on the ship for seven years, but in terms of their knowledge of Fred's, it's extensive. So you will find that when they answer the phone to you, they know a lot about Fred Olsen cruising, which will, will also help you um, make the right decision for your cruise. And if, like, like Miles, is, oh, sorry, I was just going to say, if Miles, if anybody has any questions that the agents aren't able to answer, they all have my contact details. So they can simply give me a call on my mobile or send me a message and hopefully I'll be able to answer that um, on their behalf. Super. Well, thank you everybody for joining. Appreciate your time this afternoon. I hope you found it informative. Certainly an incredible range of cruises to take advantage of from Liverpool. There's no doubt about that. Uh, thank you, Kerry, also for your time this afternoon. And uh, like I say, please get in touch if it's inspired you to do any cruising with Fred Olsen in the future. And thank you very much again for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.